Hi, everyone. Thank you for visiting today's event, which will be dedicated to statistical arbitrage in pair trading. It's a series of presentations that are prepared by Hudson and Thames. So, yep, let's start. Uh, who are we as Hudson and Thames? Here we are Jack, Aaron, uh, Yifeng, and Hansen. And we are a research company. Our motto that we believe that the scientific method is the best way to approach investment management. What we do. So we are a research company that is located in London, but our researchers are all across the world in US, Europe, Korea, and other places. And what we do is we build, we code frameworks that are uh, representing all the best practices in quantitative finance world. And our goal is to build the world's first central repository with ready to use implementations of such code. Mainly we are using Python as our base language for implementations. What are our products as Hudson and Thames? So here you're seeing the main uh, labs that we have, which are all Python packages. So um, if you're not that familiar with Python to use our products, you will have to be somewhere close to uh, doing basic stuff, such as maybe importing data sets or uh, running basic functions. So what we have, we have currently three packages, which are MLFIN lab, portfolio lab, and arbitrage lab. First two of them are open to use, and you can install them via PyPy, just pip install MLFIN lab or portfolio lab. They are a combination of algorithms that are production level, which means they're not just some raw implementations and they uh, break here and there. They are very deeply tested. We have uh, full coverage on all our code, as well as we have unit tested all our code. It comes along with the great documentation that we're writing as a team, research notebooks, which means that you can basically run the code on your machine, tweak it here and there, see what works and work not for you. And you can feel how you can use it in your specific application. Um, so MLFIN Lab is a set of algorithms that are all dedicated to machine learning in quantitative finance, and it's mainly works of Professor Lopez de Prado, but we also added such modules as networks, data generation, backtesting, and others. You're free to follow the links in my, oh, I have to share the presentation link, I think, for you to be able to follow along if you wish. Yep, that's in the, in the Zoom chat now. Um, Portfolio Lab is gathering all landmark implementations of portfolio optimization algorithms. They will be starting from uh, Markowitz's modern portfolio theory of mean variance, but with different target optimization functions, as well as CLA. We also have um, clustering hierarchical algorithms, such as the Prado's HRP, HRC, NCO. Recently, we've added also black Letterman models, um, and there are also a few additional things that you might be interested in, which are the codependence module uh, estimators of risk, estimators of covariance, and other useful stuff to use for portfolio creation and optimization. Our latest product, Arbitrage Lab, is a paid one. Um, the, oh, sorry, I made a direct link. Yeah, everyone should see it now. Sorry for that. So yeah, the Arbitrage Lab is a paid product, but since what we're presenting today is based on the Arbitrage Lab and all the implementations are there already, you can use your CAS Business School email address and follow this form right here and get a two month trial, which includes all the code that you can use for two months for free, documentation, which is pretty well written and research notebooks. Um, just kind of write there your name, surname, and the email, and uh, you'll get details of how to activate it and use on your email address. You can use it for education purposes, for your own purposes. Um, you're free to explore and learn from our algorithms. But the key, what is the arbitrage lab, is a, a combination of uh, pair trading statistical arbitrage algorithms, and these are what we're going to be covering today. Um, next, uh, we also have the program called Apprenticeship, which is for students that want to gain some specific knowledge in 
development of code or writing production level code, analyzing literature and gain more professional skills for to boost career or just to gain more public attention of what you do. Um, we do it for almost a year now. Uh, in general, we take three to four apprentices a cohort. Um, the current one is the one in which Aaron, Hansen, and Yifeng are that are going to present after me. And the next cohort we're opening in February, so in two weeks already. If you're interested, please check it. Um, you'll come from all the process from analyzing literature to doing basic implementations, discussing what can be improved, what can be done better, turning your implementations into production ready uh, code. So adding documentation, adding doc strings, adding unit tests, testing everything, and then packaging it with a documentation, research notebooks, and doing presentation as well as boosting your public image. Now, today's presentation series plan. It will be around, um, I think, uh, with the Google form, please try to um, log in into Google. I think it should work. If not, accord, like when I'll be going, I'll just post an updated link. Sorry for that. Uh, today's plan for the presentations. We're having four presentations today. So I'll do the distance approach in uh, pairs trading. Then I'll hand over to Yifang that will tell you about simulating co-integrated pairs and the approach of minimum profit optimization. Following by Hansen, who will tell you about copula-based trading strategies. And we'll finish up with the machine learning in statistical arbitrage presentation by Aaron here. We estimate that each presentation should take 25 minutes and there will be specific five minutes of Q&A session uh, after each presentation. So if you have questions, please answer, uh, please ask them there. We're also posting links to our social media. So if you have something broader to discuss or will be uh, behind this, the schedule, you're free to contact us on social media. We'll be glad to answer any of your questions regarding the presentation or just to chat about the professional specific stuff. So my name is Ilya Barzi, and I'm a quantitative research team lead at Hudson and Thames. Last year, graduated from University of Warsaw and got my master's in computer science and econometrics. Studied um, application of codependence measure in portfolio optimization and helped develop various products in Hudson and Thames. Here are my links if you'd like to either carry some conversation outside of this presentation or just follow me. Now to the main um, theme of today's my presentation, the distance approach in pairs trading. I'm going to cover first the general field of pairs trading so we're not being lost in uh, specifications and you know what we're going to be talking about. Then I'll specifically tell you about the distance approach, um, implementations and results of code that we have in the arbitrage lab and in general the baseline distance approach. We'll finish it up with discussions of upsides and downsides of this approach. And I'll carry this to um, Yifeng, who will then cover the co-integration approach. <clears throat> so the pairs trading concept, let's um, see what this is in general. So it consists of three elements. First, we have to find a pair, which is two securities whose prices are moving together historically. Sounds easy. Next, we're monitoring the spread during some trading period. And based on how the spread between prices behaves, we are doing trades. So one of the options to do trades is, say, if the prices diverge uh, and the spread widens, we just short the winner and buy the loser. Therefore, expecting that at some future period of time, they'll come back to the equilibrium state. So the winner will uh, the winner's price will decrease and the loser's price will increase and will close the deal and will gain a profit. But however easy this sounds, there are, as you understand, many variations here. So how would you find the pair? What is moving uh, together historically pairs? Then how long would you monitor the spread? Trading is another section because there are countless ways to um, think of strategies that will work in this specific framework. Therefore, we'll right now uh, clear everything up and structure it. There is a great paper by Seacrofts. <clears throat> All the papers that I'm going to be citing in this presentation are linked in my uh, presentation on Google. I think you can check this out now. So you'll be able to read the original paper and get 
more understanding if you gonna if you if you'd like to go deeper into detail. So um, what how can we divide pairs trading? There are five main approaches according to C. Krauss, and the fifth one breaks up into three additional approaches. I'll explain you what this everything means. So distance approach, co integration, time series, stochastic control, and other. Uh, is essentially machine learning, copula, principal component analysis, and others. Here is a general completion status by now of how many of this, how, which part of this approach is implement, implemented in the arbiters of package to which you'll gain access to. Um, so you can kind of estimate how well are we, how well did we develop a specific approach. So the distance approach, it's where it all started. Um, the paper that was published in 1999 uh, by Gatif and others started this whole moving into um, pairs trading. Uh, and still, this field is not that well described in literature based on citation count and the number of strategies in comparison to momentum strategies or other widely known ones. So the distance approach is you take two asset prices, you see if they're moving together based on a simple metric, say a simple Euclidean distance, then you calculate the spread uh, of these uh, two prices during the uh, trading period. And if it diverges greatly, you just trade. Pretty simple, no hard, uh, uh, no hard test being done here. Then the co-integration approach, which uh, is based on a harder econometric and statistical theory. And it requires for a pair to be traded or for it to be good to be co-integrated, uh, which is a harder uh, requirement compared to just basic close distance. Um, some ideas of the co-integration approach Yifeng will cover in his presentation today. But general, uh, you have to do a co-integration test, either uh, Johansen, Engelgranger, or any other you prefer before you'll be trading a pair. The time series approach doesn't care about choosing pairs. However, the main idea there is that you're modeling the spread or trying to predict it. And based on this prediction, you do a trade. So this stochastic control is really similar, but uh, if time series uses the time series model, such as Arma, Arima for this, the stochastic control uses some stochastic models. This may be Markov chains or other stuff, but again, say um, based on statistical properties of the spread, you're doing your trades. The other breaks down into these three pieces. Why is it the other and not just uh, additional three elements uh, of this diagram? Well, because these methods are either really not that well covered in the literature and still are areas of research, or they're not very well linked to the previous four um, approaches. So they include machine learning, which means applying machine learning to any of the stage of pair trading. That may be pair selection, um, monitoring the spread, doing trades in anywhere if it's application of machine learning. This is the machine learning approach. And Aaron, at the end of our presentation today, will cover how to choose pairs using machine learning, which is a great tool to use. Because if you don't want, you can just use it as is without any additional parameters whatsoever. The copula approach is using uh, such element as copula. And Hansen will cover in pretty good detail, and you'll have a good understanding of what copula is and how it's used in training after our today's presentation. And finally, the principal component analysis, which is using principal component analysis in uh, parts of the pairs trading uh, framework. And we have uh, one landmark implementation of this in Arbiters Lab currently. Um, we are still planning to improve our package function tools. And you'll see pretty much all new updates in the upcoming one to two months. And we're planning to complete the arbitrage lab in about three months time. Now the baseline uh, distance approach. So as I said, this is the paper that started everything in a broad sense in uh, pairs trading. Uh, it was it, it's the most cited paper in uh, pairs trading. And uh, the approach is that simple. You'll see right now. Um, the paradoxality of this approach is that using it, 
you could made uh, abnormal returns during a really, really long period of time in history. So up to 2009, it worked great and without any issues, so to say. Um, Right now, I'll describe the approach, but it consists of a picking securities, then normalizing prices, uh, calculating the distance between pairs, then choosing pairs. Uh, I'll cover briefly the entry and exit logic of the approach. Uh, how also some examples of code, like if you have arbitrage that that's what you do, that's what you get. Um, upsides and downsides of the strategy are a, a discussion point. Uh, here is going to be a bit of math, so for the next five minutes, please stay with me here. I'm from, I promise it's going to be really quick. So first, preparation. Um, authors picked liquid US stocks, uh, daily observations from 62 to 2002nd year, and uh, now goes to periods. First is the pair formation, where we pick pairs that we are going to trade, and the second is trading, where based on previously unobserved data, we'll generate some trading signals and uh, we'll see how it goes. Pair formation period. First, we're normalizing all stock prices. And here, based on the images, you can see that normalization is basically shifting our data set range of values from our original set of values to from zero to one, which is pretty simple. But here we have to remember and somewhere write down the minimum and maximum values that we used for normalization, because we'll also be using these values to normalize the prices in the trading period. Now, how do we choose pairs? Um, the simple Euclidean uh, square distance is what we use. Here is an image so you can get a better understanding of how closeness of pairs is measured. So for each point in two time series, which are normalized, we're calculating this difference between points. So you can see them on the axis uh, as gray lines. And we take uh, some of their squares and the pairs that have least squares are picked. So we're choosing, uh, like say we have 100 stocks. So we're looking at all the combination of stocks and we're picking the N closest pairs. And we'll be basically trading those pairs. Um, this is how it looks with a bit of visualization. Uh, but the next step is calculating uh, historical spread volatility. Here um, you have an example of two normalized price series. OK, nothing hard here. We're calculating the spread, which is just the difference between the series, as you can see uh, here. And we're just calculating its uh, volatility, in this case, the standard deviation. We are calculating the standard deviation because it's going to be used as a threshold to enter or exit a trade during the uh, trading period. Now we can finally move to the trading period itself. Um, first, we have the new data set now. So we're observing either incoming values of prices or we have some set of prices that we're um, generating uh, signals on. We have to normalize it as well. But we're using the previous uh, minimum and maximum values of prices. And we're also calculating the spreads for those n values. So the same as on these images here, but this is the prices normalized for the formation period. And we are doing the same for the trading period. And here comes the logic of the algorithm. So when do you enter? When do you exit a trade? What does this all mean? Uh, it's that simple. At each given point of time, you either have one open trade per pair or you don't have any open trades at all. Um, you're setting two uh, thresholds, one upper and one lower for the spread value. In the original paper, uh, these thresholds are two, two historical deviations. So the deviations that were calculated on the um, pairs formation period, the last step right here, we're using this value to, you, uh, to set this threshold here, basically. And the whole idea is if the spread value diverges a lot from its mean value, in this case, uh, zero, uh, then we um, bet that it will co come back to the uh, zero value um, because we assume that uh, the equilibrium situation where the spread is zero is staying along with the pair. So let's see here. If the spread value exceeds two historical deviations, it generates a sell signal. If it's below minus two historical deviations, we generate the buy signal. And we close a uh, trade if it crosses the zero line. 
So here, basically, um, this thing would generate two signals here for entering a trade, and uh, it will exit here because we only have one open trade per time. So opening here, closing here, and opening here, closing here. Um, one small comment is like the strategy would generate a buy a sell signal here, but you wouldn't be able to execute it till the next day because we're all working on daily assets. So technically, we'll open a trade here and close it here, and we'll open a trade here and close it here. I think it's pretty simple. Now, how is it used? Original paper proposes 12 months for the pairs formation period and six months for trading period. And with this approach, they tested data all the way from the 62nd year to 2002, and it was working perfect. It was great. Um, they picked top 20 pairs of stocks and used two historical deviations uh, of threshold to enter a trade. Basically, um, Already you can see that there are a lot of variations that you can do with the strategy. First, you can choose how will you form pairs? What distance strategies are you gonna be using? Second, you can change the number of pairs that you're using. So here, um, 20 pairs uh, of stocks in the original paper, you can use top five, top 100, or you can even shift and use the first 20 after the previous 20, whatever. Um, you can also change the sensitivity of the signal generation. So if you'll increase this from two historical deviations to say two and a half, it will rise the line up here. So the strategy will be much less sensitive. It will take more um, divergence from the mean value for it to, be, to activate a trade signal. Or you can decrease it and therefore it will be much more sensitive to uh, entering a trade. Um, what also can be tweaked is the weights of portfolio in our, uh, of the pairs in our portfolio. So we have 20 pairs, right? You can uh, assign them equal weights in trading. You can use some other approach here. Or basically, even when you're trading a pair, should you just buy one uh, stock and sell one stock, or you should apply some kind of weights and trade them based on their prices or invested uh, equity? It all depends. Uh, now let's see finally how this thing works enough with the um, showing you how the theory behind it works. So um, if you have the access to the arbitrage lab, this heavily commented piece of code basically shows you how you can generate um, trading signals just from your CSV file with prices. Or if you'd like to fit additional daily basis or even higher frequency values to it, there is uh, a way to do this. So first we're importing the distance strategy. Um, prices we assume are stored in the CSV file, so we're just using pandas to load it. Separating for us pairs formation period will be before 2019 and then signal generation after 2019. We're basically applying and taking the top 20 pairs but skipping the first five, which you can do if you want to omit the top pairs in this case. Um, we're keeping the same divergence to as two standard deviation from top and the um, bottom to enter a trade. And here, if we plot, for example, the first pair, this is what we get. Um, <clears throat> these are normalized prices during the trading period. Therefore, you can see they're normalized not from 0 to 1, but from 0 0.6 to 1.4. And you can get the number of units to hold. In our case, it's just the trading signals that we get. So here you see that the spread diverges. And here where it hits the critical or two sigma historical value, you are entering a sell trade in here. And this thing closes where it's hitting zero. So the spread here equals zero because the price is crossed. We're closing the trade. The same thing here, but with a buy signal. So here they are diverging greatly we're opening a buy signal and closing it uh, right here when they cross. Pretty simple as well. And we can, we can convert the signals based on some um, logic of how would you trade uh, the, how would you backtest it basically into the equity curve. So in this particular example, over the first half of 2019, you would get this equity curve from this exact pair. So you can see that here it entered a trade and here we exited a short trade. And here we went in the long trade and gained some additional um, 
equity curve profit here. And in other times, no uh, changes in equity curve since uh, no signals are generated. Um, pretty simple, yeah, but uh, a lot of variation since you can change input parameters, you can change the sensitivity, you can manage the whole portfolio of pairs and a lot of stuff to optimize actually. Now let's finally discuss, is it good? Is it bad? Why do we want it or don't want it? So the upsides of the strategy. First, uh, what's good about it is it established pair trading concept in the literature in general. So this was a landmark paper that is mostly cited in the field and it started like um, the whole industry in the research basically. Uh, also the baseline strategy generated excess returns over a long period, as I said, for over 40 years. Um, then it is, this method in the original form is pretty robust to data snooping, which means that we're just taking the whole universe of stocks. We're not tweaking anything. We're not expecting to fit a particular backtest data set. It's easy to interpret, as you saw, the whole idea is if spread diverges, expect it will uh, get back to the equilibrium position. It's non-parametric, so in the original approach, you're using two sigma, no input parameters, nothing, and it's economic model free. So there are no issues with misspecification, one thing or the other. Downsides, there are some. Uh, I'll try to explain them to you. So first, using the metric that we used to um, pick pairs, maybe not optimal, and it actually is not optimal. You can see Krauss's explanation for that. Uh, the main idea is, as you remember, we'll ca we calculated this sum of square values, but this can be uh, rewritten into a sum of two elements, first being the variance and the second being some other element. But the key here is we're basically minimizing the variance. And for this approach uh, to work good, we want to have two properties. First, high historical variance, which means that the spread will diverge greatly from its mean and therefore will be entering positions pretty in a good places. First, second is we want the mean reversion property. So once it diverges from its mean position, it goes back and we can make often trades and have good um, record of trades. But we, if we're minimizing the variance itself, we won't get the optimal trade. So we, like there should be a way around it. Second, uh, there are no strict cointegration tests performer, uh, performed in this method. So as you saw, we're just seeing if pairs look similar, I mean price series, we just take it as a pair. But this means that the correlations and codependencies that we found may be spurious. And actually, according to this work here by Du and Faf in 2010, up to 32% of the original uh, authors' paper pairs that they found are actually do not converge, which means that in the testing period, they kind of look that they're moving together, but in the trading period, they don't behave as we expect them to be. And it's actually shown in some of the papers that um, if only the cointegration uh, test would be performed, we would get better mean reverting behavior and better volatility properties. But you'll hear more about the cointegration approach uh, along uh, with DFANG's presentation. Um, and yeah, the, the biggest uh, problem here is that future researchers found, in the future researchers found that since 2009, this approach in the original form doesn't generate abnormal returns. And actually, if you take into account the transaction costs, it's not that great anymore. But you can build a lot of useful stuff based on it. And if tweaked, this can be pretty useful. As you saw, we're in general, we're able to generate profit using just this simple approach. What are some improvements that were proposed by researchers and what should we do in this case? So um, we would be interested in a choosing different pair uh, distance measure, um, a more advanced one that wouldn't minimize the um, variance of the pair spread. We would want to add some criterion to increase the variance and increase, like improve the mean reversion probabilities of uh, pair selection. And there are also kind of 
different flows that can be, so the baseline algorithm can be changed drastically. This includes uh, limiting matching securities within industries. So we don't have that much spurious uh, relationships, but this also carries a problem that in that case, we won't be uncovering the uh, supply chain relationships, which is not that good. Second thing is um, we may want to add a simple measure, which is favor pairs with high number of zero crossings, which is kind of not technically, but an estimator of a mean, uh, of a mean reversion property. And also to improve uh, and get rid of the, some of the spurious relationships that we found, adding a family-wise error rate. Um, changes of the strategies that are drastic. A, using Pearson's correlation to pick pairs as described in the work by Chen and others. This can also be moved to a quasi-multivariate or totally multivariate uh, pairs trading problem, which means that in quasi-multivariate, you'll be trading not one pair, uh, one asset versus other asset as in pairs trading standard approach, but one asset versus a portfolio of other assets. It's quasi-multivariate. And in fully multivariate, you're trading one portfolio of assets versus other portfolio of assets. And this approach can be expanded to um, multivariate one. Um, also, it can be adjusted to high frequency applications as described in the paper by uh, NAF in 2013. And here are the links of references that if you'd prefer to look for the original papers, I highly recommend checking the Krauss paper, which goes first here as this is the Landstone uh, landmark paper that we used in general to build the arbitrage lab. And you'll gain pretty like a lot of understanding about the topic. Um, highly recommend that. And that's it for my part of the presentation. Uh, next three people are going to be presenting in a couple of minutes now. So uh, Yifeng, Hansen, and Aaron, who are all apprentice at Hudson and Thames. Now I think it's time for your question. If you have any, I'll gladly answer. <laughs> 